Hey everyone, I hope you've been doing well and enjoying my posts so far on Patreon. I wanted to show you the tools that I use typically for either making garments, pattern making, pressing, just kind of my essentials that I would highly recommend um, that you get your hands on unless you already own them. Um, I thought I would also go over how to use them and when to use them because sometimes there can be misconceptions with just like pins and using them for sewing and how um, there actually are different types of pins for different types of projects. So first I'll go over pressing tools. Here I've got a tailor ham. You can see on one side it has a wool kind of um, plaid cover and you use this side when pressing wool or any type of like natural fibers. Um, there's a cotton backside and you can use that for polyester, um, lighter weight cotton fabrics, but just consider that either side is for different types of fabrics and different types of pressing. It's also got a lot of rounded edges so it can kind of conform to whatever you're pressing um, while using that. I've also got a clapper. It's really just like a wood block, um, but the best part is that when you're pressing, um, I would say like wovens, cotton, wool, um, even heavier weight fabrics, you can use this and as you press open your seams, you place this right over top and it just kind of helps to reinforce um, the pressing. Also, as far as pressing tools, um, you'll need an iron. It's really important to know the settings on your iron. Um, it's good to have a type of iron that has a steam or a mist setting. Um, I also highly recommend only using distilled water if you can, because if you use tap water or even filtered water, it can calcify and give you kind of like these white specks in your iron and that could damage your fabric. So when you are pressing, consider always using a piece of scrap muslin as a pressing cloth. That'll just kind of help protect your fabric from the plate of the iron. Um, another really important thing is you've got a dial on your iron. Sometimes they're in different locations, but it does tell you all the heat settings and even what types of fabrics you would use for those. Um, most newer irons have an auto shut off, which is good because sometimes we forget them plugged in. And another note, you may want to empty your iron after every time that you've used it um, if you don't work on projects frequently as the water can kind of get moldy or stinky in there and you don't want it to kind of stain or stink up your fabric or project you're working on. As for cutting tools, I've got this Tula Pink rotary cutter. Um, I believe it's 45 millimeter, which is the larger of the blades. Um, the cool part about this is it has a shield, so you can just retract that when you're using it and cover up when you're not so you don't get hurt by um, leaving your tools open. Um, I just like this because aesthetically it's really pretty, but otherwise really any rotary cutter is kind of a good tool to consider when cutting because it can save a lot of time um, when you are cutting from patterns to fabric. I also have a pair of nippers here. You don't need an expensive pair. Um, I have these Ginger brand, and I'm biased because Ginger is one of my favorites. Um, I think mostly because in the industry, a lot of sample makers and designers, um, it's just like your go-to, that brand. Um, I believe these are just Fisker brand. Oh no, these are Ginger as well. Huh, go figure. Um, but these are my paper scissors. I love them because they're plastic, they're lightweight. Um, the blade is really, honestly, I've never even sharpened these and I've never had a problem with them. And you can get them at like Joann's or even Amazon, pretty inexpensive. Um, this is an LDH pair of scissors that I use um, as my fabric shears. And I've had them sharpened once before. But they're great because they came pre-oiled and they came in like a nice case and stuff. So if you want to set your scissors away when you're not using them, um, you can protect them by keeping them in the case and in the sleeve. Um, as for pattern making tools, I've got my French curves here. And oddly enough, these two French curves are the exact same shape. So you can live without one of them. Um, I think just in college, and I've had these that long, um, you know, you're just kind of like, if you don't get both, your professor's not going to be happy about it. Um, so if you prefer the see-through, um, this one has the inches on it, but really you're not going to use that guide too often, um, but I guess it's good to have, so it really just depends on what you prefer. But it's good to have those for tracing and truing armholes or any curves on your pattern, 
and there's no right or wrong way to use it. You just want to kind of find the most organic continuous lines when you are truing with those rulers. Um, otherwise, I've got this tiny L square, which I love because it is see-through. And I got this at Joanne as well. It is Westcott, which I'm sure a lot of you um, probably own a see-through ruler by that brand. It um, doesn't matter what brand it is, but I highly recommend having see-through rulers for pattern making. Otherwise, I've got my tracing wheel. This is actually a vintage Dritz tracing wheel. I just love it because the handle's really cool. But depending on what type of fabric you're tracing onto, you want to be really conscientious of how spiky those spiky bits are. I have poked myself many a time, and um, you can very easily damage fabric when using wax paper to kind of trace through with that. They make like serrated ones that are a little less intense. So just, you know, it, I think it's more based on preference. But, um,. I don't know, I just like this one. It looks like a medieval device. <laughs> All right, next I've got just my good old Taylor's chalk. You can get this in any color. Um, I prefer blue just because it's got that higher contrast and sometimes with the yellow, it can get lost on your garment and then you don't know how to find it later. And then the red I just think is always kind of like my big no-no with pattern making because Red is scary, like that definitely can stain. Where the blue, if you mark closer to the seam allowance or rather to the cut edge, then you can just kind of flake it away and or even cut it away later. But um, this is a wax um, Taylor's chalk. I believe they make them like the consistency a, le a little less waxy, um, but this is Clover brand. It comes with a bit of um, just like a sharper edge always around. Do not drop this. You can see I've already dropped mine many a times, um, but your really that edge is your go-to when doing your markings. I've also got a notcher. Um, you don't need this, but I just love it because when you're notching into your patterns, you can really just clip, clip away at your pattern paper to indicate seam allowances or notches. Um, they sell these on Amazon for like 10 bucks. All right, so now to talk about some pins and when and where to use them. Here I've got some silk pins, and silk pins are just shorter and way more delicate, and you can use these for absolutely everything. Um, they just, they're not as invasive or aggressive, if you will. So these are usually my go-to, but usually on camera, um, you can't really see them. So I go with the quilters pins, which have a thicker, thicker pin part of it, um, but you can see the ball head and maybe that's just easier for some people as you're sewing because you'll know where they are to pull them out. Um, I highly recommend not sewing over your pins, so um, it's good to have these, but just another thing to consider, you're pinning into chiffon or organza, these are more likely to damage, um, damage your fabric. Um, I just have this cool magnet that sometimes when I'm using my industrial machine I can just um, place onto there and it just keeps all my little random stuff. Of course a trusty seam ripper. Um, this one in particular has a little br brush so I can just brush away any fuzz or um, build up on the machine. Then I've got these really fancy silk pins. I got these in New York um, I believe maybe at Sill, Sill Thread which is one of my favorite shops but I just they're just so pretty. So I'm sure whenever I use these to always place them back in this box, but that was just a little splurge because um, I love pink. Um, I've also got my two cutting mats here, which um, the great part about these Ulfa mats is that they are self-healing. So when you're cutting on them, you don't have to worry, oh my God, I've damaged it. What the heck am I going to do? You're good. You're golden with that. Um, otherwise, I've just got a few sets of different needles for my machine. Here are ballpoint needles. Um, you have to be sure that when you're buying the needles, they're for your machine. Um, obviously with like a home or um, domestic type sewing machine, you're probably always only gonna come across these, but I actually went shopping recently at a place in the Poconos while I was away for a weekend and they sold me the wrong needles. They actually gave me um, industrial machine needles, which look very similar. They're just like a hair longer and they actually don't have the flat edge across the top 
like the home needles do. So you've got like that flat edge on one side, the round on the other, so you know that you set it into the machine correctly. Um, but otherwise, ballpoint needles are for knits. Um, jersey needles, same situation. One is a little sharper than the other. Then you've got a double needle for doing um, hems or any kind of decorative stitching. Those are a little tricky to get the hang of. But with the double needle, you actually place two spools of fabric onto your machine at the same time. Most machines have this peg that you would set on top next to where you would wind your bobbin. Um, I believe these are just standard size 14 needles. And we've got universal needles as well. So universal needles can be a little misleading because universal, you would think, oh, I can use them with all fabrics. But um, unless you have a walking foot on a machine, which mine is attached right now, I can't show you, but a walking foot is the best absolute investment. So consider getting one of those if you don't already. Um, also with bobbins, so for the domestic machine, there can be two different tight heights of bobbin. You got the shorter and taller, but really they're they're both for the same machine because they both have the same um, the same width, and that's the most important part when buying these. Um, otherwise, last but not least, I've got my clips here, and these are kind of tricky because they can get in the way when you are um, sewing. But these are by Clover. But I like these because if you're putting binding on something or some sort of maybe like a facing or you don't want to put pins through your fabric, you can go with these. Of course, I forgot my pattern weights. Sorry, but yeah, pattern weights, pretty self-explanatory. I'll be sure to leave a few links in the description if you're interested in finding some of these items. But let me know if you have any questions and enjoy designing.